Hi, everybody. It's Pastor Steve, and you've caught me again in my library. And uh, we got an amazing week this week. We Last week was so awesome with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that um, this week we've still got to keep going with that. There's some stuff that we haven't yet talked about. And there's an amazing thing that you're going to learn today. We're going to go over last week for a little while and then reestablish some, some things. And then this week we're going to release you into even some more amazing truth. You wait. It's going to be so exciting. And so this whole video, um, I'm Dr. Steve, pastor of Great Church in Canada here, along with my wonderful wife, Dr. Carmen. And I, every morning I get up and I spend time in this hammock and, and worship God and, and read the Bible and, and take notes and have a great time here in my library. The, the chapter, the, the verse in the Bible this talks about is Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Jesus got up well before light. Well, we missed that. It's light now, but that's okay. We're still with God. He got up well before light, left the house, found his way to a secluded place and gave himself to prayer. And that's what this video is all about. Prayer should not be boring. Prayer should be exciting. Prayer should be ha joy enjoyable. And prayer should change earth. Prayer should bring heaven to earth. God's will from heaven on earth. A manifestation in your life, in our lives. Prayer should be powerful, effective and do stuff. <laughs> you want to learn to do stuff? Well, that's what today is all about. Today, we're going to learn about doing stuff and bringing miraculous. So I'm going to go over last week's notes and I'm going to add to it this week. We're going to have a great time. Let's pray before we get there. Father, we open our hearts to you. We're so excited being in your presence. Holy Spirit, we open our minds, our hearts and our lives to your truth, your wisdom, the revelation that you want to share to us. Today, we open our minds, our hearts and our lives and we welcome you to restore back to our understanding every truth that you want for us as your children. We take hold of truth now. Jesus, you are our Christ. You're our saviour. You're the one that helped us. You, we are born again. We're new creatures because of you. And we are now in you, Christ Jesus. We are with you, of you, in you. We're, we're just like you, children of God. So we draw on all of the benefits of that in Jesus' name today. Amen. So really quickly, I'm going to jump through last week's lesson in the first 10 minutes. And then we've got 20 minutes of talking about some amazing access points. How to bring heaven to earth. So last week, as you know, I talked about blessed with every spiritual blessing. And we looked at Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing. And that means every. That means we don't miss out on one. That means as a son or daughter of God, you have every. Every blessing in the heavenly places. And the heavenly places I was talking about was not God's throne room. It is the heavenly places that exist here in this life. The spirit realm, the realm where there are angels and demons and, and God's power of the Holy Spirit. We as Christians operate in that realm as we pray, as we come before the Father. We come in the name of Jesus and we are just like him spiritually. So when we, become, when we come before our spiritual God in heaven, in the throne room of heaven, as we come before God in the throne room of heaven, we have a, we do that spiritually speaking. And so we come in Christ, we come before God clothed in all the acceptability of Christ Jesus himself. And in Christ, we are the possessor of all of these spiritual blessings in the heavenly place immediately, the moment you're born again. But you don't know some of these blessings because you haven't been taught them yet. <laughs> I started talking about them last week and we've got to look at the story of the prodigal son. We might not read it today, but the story of the prodigal son shows the father and two sons. To one son was representing a more of a religious son, the older brother. And the younger one is talking about the one led by the spirit, but he had walked away and he was being carnal. And now he's walked away. He said, give me my inheritance. And literally what that means is he knew 
right then and there. That inheritance was his. Do you know that as a believer? Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places is already yours. And as you read the New Testament, you can read and you can believe and receive every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We see Paul the Apostle saying this, (laughs) Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. When Paul says us, Paul is putting us in the same place as him, putting us, every one of us believers, us. So Paul is talking about us, not just him as an apostle. He's passed away. He's gone. He's He's, he's one of the witnesses watching, <laughs> I guess. And so what? Well, I'm just joking on that part. But anyway, let's keep going. Um, so it says he blessed us, talking about us as well as Paul, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So every spiritual blessing that Paul operated in, that he had access to, we do to us. So looking back at the prodigal son, he knew every spiritual blessing was his. So I want you to know, as I said last week, any doctrine that tries to restrict God, the Holy Spirit, or Christ being glorified through our lives is antichrist. Anything that tries to restrict the spiritual blessing and authority we have in the spirit realm. And so we looked at the the, the understanding of this and we we looked at the same word for uh, blessing here in this verse, as it is in this verse, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. I'm a Gentile. I'm not a Jew. That it may come on the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. That we, who? We, Paul and us. Paul is speaking to the Galatians. We might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. through the same Spirit that Paul was given. The same anointing that Christ had. We have as well. So when you look at these words, when Paul says us, <laughs> bless us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place. He's talking about all of us. That we might receive the promise of the Holy We, all of us, not just them, not just the apostles, all of us. That's including concerning spiritual gifts, spiritual blessings. The word spiritual is the same word spiritual here, pneumaticos. And it's looking at pneuma is breath or spiritual. And the the spiritual gifts uh, that have been given to us. He said, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant because they're for us. The spiritual gifts are for all of us. Every one of us. We are, it says here, that the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of Abraham was for all the children of God, might come upon the Gentiles. Who are Gentiles? Me, Paul was a Jew. I am a Gentile. So Paul is talking to me, a Gentile, upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we, who's he talking about? We, the Jews and the Gentiles, Paul and us might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. We have this Spirit and the Spirit is Holy Spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance. What is the inheritance? That that we will be children of God will go to heaven one day. That's one part of the inheritance. We are children of God. We will go to heaven. He's the guarantee. He's the foretaste. He is the one that is the promise of, of eternal life. Now, though, and in eternity in heaven. Now we start eternal life. Eternal life is now. We don't have to wait till we cark it. We don't have to wait till the heart stops beating. No, now is when we enter into spiritual life. Now we are children of God. Now we come before the Father acceptably, the same acceptability as Christ himself. When we come every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, so we get to enjoy Christ's favor and acceptance forever. Favor and acceptance means now, forever, now. So there we go. I've started that. And there's the first 10 minutes of this video. That's some stuff we've gotten into. Now, I want to get a little bit more specific today, speaking about the blessing we have. I finished off last week's uh, time talking to you about the book of Ephesians and how Ephesians chapter 1 to 3 talks about our position. Chapter 4 to 6 talks about our practice. 
But we want to talk today about our position in Christ. What is this every spiritual blessing in heavenly places mean? Well, it literally is that we're chosen, adopted and forgiven. We are the children of God. We are the prodigal son who came back. <laughs> and we have access now to our inheritance. What is our inheritance? Well, let's look at a few of these things I wrote here on a verse. I read through and I wrote some of these down as I was reading through Ephesians chapter 2 and chapter 3 because I want to talk about our position. So I just read through and, and jotted down some notes on my iPhone and then I've printed this off and then so that you could look at it this, this time. So divine privileges and resources in Christ. Remember, divine privileges and resources in Christ. So what is this spiritual blessing that's conferred on us? Remember I talked about blessing last week. Blessing is a, a word that confers a gift upon us. What is this gift? We are children of God. We're chosen, adopted, forgiven. And because of that, Spiritual blessings, specifically in this verse, refers to divine privileges and resources available now. That is that we're chosen, adopted and forgiven. What are these resources and privileges because of our adoption, our cho chosen and our forgiven state in Christ? Walking before the Father acceptably. I'm acceptable. You are acceptable. <laughs> so here we go. Look at these. We have free access to the Father. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 18 verse 18 We have fellow we are fellow citizens and members of God's household oh my goodness that means we get to walk up to God's refrigerator how about I read through these and then we'll talk about them in a minute and that that was in Ephesians 2:19 we have a we are the dwelling place of God Ephesians 2:22 we literally God dwells in us. We are fellow heirs and partakers of God's promise of eternal life. Ephesians 3, 6. We get eternal life in heaven, but that word eternal life, it starts now. The promise is now and in, he, in heaven after we pass away because we already have eternal life. We're born again. We're new creatures. So Ephesians 3, 6. And then in the next verse, Ephesians 3, 8, it says that the unsearchable riches of Christ, oh my goodness, of his personhood, of the anointing on Christ, tapping into, it's Christ, the riches of Christ, the anointing, the riches of the anointed one, touching his heart, his person, who he is, but also access to every single spiritual blessing, every single authority and anointing, in his Christ nature, his position. Luke 10, 19 says we have the authority to stand on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And it's literally talking about the enemy that operates in the spirit realm. When Jesus walked on planet Earth, and when he came across a demon-possessed person, he understood that that demon-possessed person was filled with demons. But Jesus had authority in that spirit realm that the demons operated out of, and he could speak and say, get out! <laughs> and they had to leave him. And they went into the pigs. <laughs> you have authority to cast out demons when you have the seal the Holy Spirit guarantee in terms of the gifts. I'm not talking about salvation. Yes, salvation, you have authority because you are a child of God. You have been forgiven. You have the blessings. And then, but as, as this key comes on us, the, the ring of the authority of Christ in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So the unsearchable riches of Christ himself, the anointed one, named in the family of God, Ephesians 3, 14 and 15. Oh my goodness. We are named now in the family. You know, the Godfather movie. <laughs> We're in the family. And uh, nobody hurts you because the Godfather is your grandfather or father. <laughs> See you safe. You walk around and no one's going to, oh my goodness, that's the daughter of the Godfather. That's the granddaughter of the Godfather. Well, listen, you're in the household of faith. Our heavenly father. He's our God, Father. <laughs> He's given you authority in the realm of the Spirit to walk as children of God. And we are free. Nothing can harm you. Luke 10, 9, nothing by any means shall harm you. If you understand this, you know this, take hold of that inheritance. In the Spirit realm, 
That's what it's talking about. And um, in the in the family of God. It also says Christ dwelling in our hearts. The anointed one, Ephesians 3, 17. The anointed one and his anointing dwelling in our hearts. These earthen vessels, God himself dwelling. We're a dwelling place of God. Dwelling in our hearts, in human hearts, in our in, in us as humans, the, the anointed one, uh, Christ himself. And so when the spirit realm understands that and sees that and sees our authority, do you know Jesus had the ability when he was on the cross to call down legions of angels to take him off the cross and beat up those bad guys? <laughs> he had that authority, but he didn't use it because he knew he had to give his life for you and I. So he stayed on that cross. He didn't use that authority in that moment to do that. But there were many times on planet Earth. Remember, he was just walking as a man. He chose to lay aside the choice to use his divinity. He came clothed in humanity. Let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. The humility that was on him. He laid aside the use, the choice to choose to use his divinity. He didn't count it robbery to be at one or equal to God. He literally came as a man and said, I'll act and walk in the flesh, in the natural, in the human nature, clothed in the anointing. That's why they called him Jesus, Savior, Christ, the anointed one. And now we are Christ ones, Christians. And that same anointing of Christ is in human hearts. So when Jesus walked through the crowd and was not harmed, we can do the same. Here's an example. Many years ago, I was in a conference in a, um, an environment. It was about 600 people in that conference. I'm sitting in the middle of the, the, the area towards the back, middle to back. And um, as I looked over my shoulder, I saw a young man and a young girl get up and walk towards the back of the room to walk out of that big auditorium and leave the church. Um, to walk out somewhere. And I felt the Spirit of God inspire me and say, say to my heart, I didn't hear him in my ears, but say to my heart, get up and go with them. And I'm like, what? Okay. And I felt embarrassed because I didn't want anyone there to see me leaving, but I obeyed. I got up, I walked out as well, and I followed them. And, and by the time I got out around the building, they were walking down towards a bush area. It was a bunch of about 20 acres of trees. And um, I saw them walking down there and I, I followed them and I called out to them and said, hey, guys, where are you going? And um, the guy shouted back, we're just going, we're just leaving, don't worry. And I said, hey, what's up? What's, are you okay? And I said, come back, guys, don't miss out what's going on. This is an awesome conference, There's some good stuff going on. Well, I didn't know, but apparently that young gentleman that was in there was not born again. And this young girl, she was a backslidden Christian who had come back to God and brought this guy with him to this conference. They were sitting in the back row. And she didn't want to leave, but he did. And he wanted to go down to the bush and have a smoke and do some other things in the bush with this girl. And she, when I said, come back, she turned around and came back. And she walked past me and went back into the thing. And he turned around. He was upset. And um, he stormed off in the other direction. And I thought, oh, what do I do? Do I just leave? And, and I just wanted him to know that God loved him. Now, this could be me <laughs> saying this. So I shouted out to him and said, hey, buddy, Jesus loves you. And he got so angry at me. It must have been, I don't know if it was God or not. But <laughs> and he turned around and he was about, you know, 30 paces away from me by this time turned around and both hands were clinched and he's walking along like a soldier almost coming back to me look angry and I thought oh my gosh what do I do Jesus and I literally prayed in my head what do I do and I got this thought an image of me closing my eyes and put my arms out in a in a in a crucifix sort of manner <laughs> and um, literally I'd be standing there and I and I did it and I closed my eyes and put my arms out and just stood there and he came up to me and I just closed my eyes and I knew he was there because I could hear him breathing. And he came up to me and he shouted at me, I'm not going to hit you. I'm not going to hit you. I'm not going to hit you. <laughs> okay, thank God. 
And literally, God protected me. He turned around and walked away. And that's all he did. And many times when Jesus is on the planet Earth, he walked through a crowd that was going to throw him off a, a cliff. He walked through crowds at times and they couldn't lay hands on him, couldn't touch him or hurt him until it was his time to be put on the cross. And that anointed one is now in you who had the authority in the spirit realm. You have the same authority. The enemy can't touch your finances, can't touch your marriage, can't touch your physical body. And if you will stand in your authority and, and speak this over him and declare, get out of my, my body, get out of my life, bring, I declare healing come down. You bust open the spirit realm and heaven comes on earth. So we've got to look at this and we've got to understand that we're named in the family, Christ dwelling in our hearts, experiencing the love of God. We literally have our eyes and hearts open to the reality of the love. We don't just hear about it as a story. We experience it for ourselves. And if you haven't experienced the love of God just yet, let's just close our eyes. I want to pray for you, Father. I just pray right now for everybody watching this YouTube video that you'll bring such a refreshing knowledge and an opening of every eye and every heart to understand the expression of your love, that you love each of us, that we not just hear about it, we sense it right now. Right now, I want you, as you're watching this video, as I pray for you, draw on the love of God. Open, open your heart and let the love of God fill your heart. Father, I pray right now for your love to pour into every heart, to fill every heart watching this video, that there be a confirmation in every heart right now of how much they are loved by you, Father, as children of God, in Jesus' name. And so we have here the fact that we are, um, Christ is dwelling in our hearts, experiencing the love of God. We literally can experience and that we're filled with all the fullness of God. Oh, my goodness. To be filled with all the fullness of God, the manifestation of all the miraculous, all the power, the glory. And, you know, God's plan is to glorify himself through our existence in this life. To glorify himself in us, that he be glorified. That his glory would be in us, our life would be an expression of living a glorified life on this earth. And it's just like when, when Jesus returns in his glory, he's dwelling in us. And the, the fullness of God dwelling in us would, would manifest on this earth. We lay hands on the sick, they recover. We speak as of the oracles of God. We speak led by the Spirit. We, we speak things that break things off people's lives. As we pray, restoration prayers, the Spirit of God shows people images of Christ coming in around their lives, bringing freedom and liberty. And as we're filled with all the fullness of God himself, this is literally one of every one of the spiritual blessing. We're blessed with every spiritual blessing. And this relates to the fullness of God. And we've got to understand we don't miss out on anything. And that's why it's so important for us to understand the fact that any doctrine that tries to restrict God, the Holy Spirit, or Christ being glorified is antichrist. It's anti the will of God. It's anti the, the will of Christ. So anything that tries to suck the life out of your spirituality that tries to stop you having an intimate personal relationship with Jesus. Do you know you can actually talk to Jesus as a person? Because he is a person. You can have a relationship with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit literally is a person. He's not a religious influence, not just some force, not just some anointing. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Father God is literally a person. Any doctrine that or any teaching that tries to suck the life out of our Christianity We've got to just kick it out because it is antichrist. We've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. We can literally walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, all of the giftings of the Spirit. We can look at the word of wisdom. We can know things 
about circumstances that our human knowledge would not be able to release to us. That's the word of wisdom. The word, word sorry, wisdom is, is a future knowledge about warnings for the future. We can have knowledge that our, our brain won't know about. the. My wife was driving along in a car one day and I was with her. It was early in the morning. We'd, we'd left a, a, a place um, in Edmonton. We're driving back towards Drayton Valley. We had our first child um, in her belly. He was there, Jabik, and Carmen's driving along and she gets this impression. It's a snowstorm, dark, and uh, she feels an impression. Be careful. That, and she sees a moose in her mind and, and in her mind's eye, a moose on the road. And she said, Stephen, I have to slow down because I just had an impression and a feeling, a sense of a, a moose on the road. And uh, as she drove, it was a um, sure enough she got on, there was this moose, or it might have been an elk, whatever it was. <laughs> I'm Australian, so I'm not great with Canadian animals. But <laughs> it was this animal was out on the road. This moose or elk was out there standing, and she had slowed down to about um, 20, 30 kilometers an hour. And it was on the middle of the road. If we had have hit that thing at 100 kilometers an hour, that would have destroyed the car. We're in a little um, Chrysler Acclaim. <laughs> and the, the could have hurt the baby, could have killed the baby, could have killed us. And the, the thing got off the road. We hit the horn. It got off the road. And we just sped back up and drove along. That was the spirit. When my wife first got saved, she's driving along the highway and she gets she's back behind this truck and this massive big semi-trailer with a big gas tank on the back of it. And she, she gets this impression, slow down. It's a word of wisdom from the Holy Spirit to protect her. She put her foot on the brake, put her foot on the brakes and um, slowed the car right down. In front of her, a car took out, uh, tried to overtake another vehicle coming head on towards her. It overtook, turned, took out, hit the truck front on. There was a massive big explosion. You couldn't even recognize the vehicle. The Holy Spirit had warned her through a word of wisdom. And she was protected. That was the, the, the night after she got born again that happened to her. So a word of wisdom guards you in, in, in the future. A word of knowledge talks about present day circumstances and information. Word of faith. Uh, uh, faith comes on us to believe things that we can't believe for. My, my wife had, um, it was impossible for her to have children. And um, I was praying for her one night and I sensed this ultra faith come around me. I, I just couldn't understand it after praying for her for six months. Every afternoon, every night, I would pray for her for one hour or a few. And this one particular time, I got up early and I'm praying for her. And I sensed this absolute belief she's going to get healed. I prayed healing over her. She she got up the next morning and her, and her stomach had puffed up and she got rushed to the hospital. The doctor said all the cysts on your ovaries had burst. This could be for your benefit. Ten months later, we had our first son, Jabek. Oh, my gosh. That's called faith. When you don't have the faith for miracles, then gifts of healings, working of miracles. See, this faith operates with healings and miracles to bring them to pass. Prophecy is speaking things powerfully and they come to pass. Uh, discerning of spirits, knowing what spirit is operating in the spirit realm against you and take authority over it. Different kinds of tongues. That's It's not just the gift of tongues. That's your personal prayer language. This is different kinds of tongues. These are tongues where you can speak in Japanese when you're over on a mission field in Japan, when you're in Ireland or somewhere else. I don't know. Um, speak like the Irish. I can't. I can't do it. But <laughs> I'm being stupid. But anyway, it's, it's different kinds of tongues. It's not just the gift of glossolalia with tongues of... of uh, anyway, interpretation of tongues. That's being able to speak when someone else is praying in a different la tongue language. You have the interpretation. It's not a word-for-word -word rendition, but it is a, a sense of, a, of an understanding of what they're saying in the spirit realm. There's, there's so many things we've been accessed to. And so with this Christ in us, this Christ one and this Christ dwelling in our hearts. We have the power to experience all of the things that Christ did. We get to walk through crowds unaffected. We get to lay hands on the sick and they recover. We get to see the miraculous happening on planet Earth. These are divine privileges and resources in Christ. We have so much more. We get to have wisdom and favor with God and with man. We get to walk with, with God's presence. Little children can be attracted to us. The anointing, the spiritual blessing on our lives draws people to us. 
gives us favour that we never knew we'd have. Let me pray for you right now. Father, I just pray for your children right now who are listening to this video, who are open to your spirit. And Lord, we open up our hearts to everything you're doing, everything you're wanting in our lives. Just as the prodigal son came back and was free to be a child in the house, not a slave. We are children. We receive all the spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Father, I declare blessing over our homes, our family, our finances, our lives, our ministries, our, our business, work, everything we're involved in, health in our bodies, life led by the Spirit, hearing your voice, Holy Spirit, led by your voice, Jesus, led by your wisdom, Father, knowing your love intimately. I declare that coming around everybody watching this video. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you know next week we're going to finish this, this series? I didn't know it was going to be a series until I started it. That's why I'm wearing the same clothes as last week. I videoed all of these videos on the one morning, a whole hour and a half. So I've got another half an hour to go, that, but that will be for you next week. You don't want to miss it. Hey, if you've been enjoying these videos, give them a thumbs up, share them with your friends online, uh, subscribe, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and you'll be war given warnings when the new ones come out every Thursday morning. I just want to encourage you, honour you, God bless you. Have a great week. See you next week. Bye for now.